This section of training is going to deal with recurring journal entries. And so I'm going to simply navigate to recurring general journals. And uh, I'm going to open this up and the recurring general journal screen has got some uh, interesting features to it. First of all, it has a recurring method here, and we're going to talk about what each of these are. But when I drill into this, I have fixed variable, balance, reversing fixed, reversing variable, and reversing balance. And so I can select any of these that I want for uh, each line that I put on the journal. But the two that we're going to look at today really are fixed and variable. And what these will do is that uh, when you're dealing with these, we're, we're looking at a uh, fixed amount that you're paying each month or that you're going to allocate each month, and the other one is a variable. And we'll see how these perform differently and what the choices are that we can make with these. The next thing is that we have these recurring frequencies, and we're going to talk about how to enter this and what the effect of this uh, has on what's going on out here. We also then have the typical kinds of things, posting date, document type, this is one that we're going to talk about, and this has a variable in it, percent four. And what this will do is that this actually enters some information on this so that you know what's going on here. We're going to, we're going to talk about exactly how that works and, uh, and what it does out here. So I want to give you some definitions of how these methods work and what they really are. So when I pick a method of fixed, this is used when the amount of the journal is the same in each period. So every month I have a recurring payment of $1,000 or whatever it may be. So the monthly uh, expense of the period, such as annual insurance throughout the year, recording fixed expenses of invoices and purchase documents, if, if purchase documents are not used. For example, cleaning or contractor services that you may have out here, where you've, uh, you've got a consistent uh, fee that you're paying for snow removal or for uh, cleaning or whatever it may be, a monthly fee. Variable is used when the amount of the journal is different each period. And uh, this is when you're using a variable type. After you post it, the amount is reduced to zero. So it clears out whatever amount you had in it so that you don't accidentally use the wrong amount again. Recording variable expense invoices if purchase documents are not used, for example, stationary maintenance, whatever. Recording regular customer sales of a customer document is not used. So if any time you have a a recurring variable expense that you want to put in here and to allocate out to other accounts, you can use this. The type balancing basically takes the balance of an account at the time you post it, zeroes it out, and allocates the expense out to all the other accounts that you've put in for allocations out here. Then we have reversing fixed, reversing variable, and reversing balance. And these work exactly the same as the top three do, with the exception that you must post these transactions on the last day of the month. And because they're configured as a reversing uh, entry, the system will reverse the entry on the first day of the month. So these are obviously for allocations where uh, you've accumulated costs during the month, but you don't have the invoice and you won't have it until the fifth of next month or whatever it may be. And you want to accrue those charges back into the prior period. The next uh, field we want to look at is recurring frequency. And these fields can be set so that they will post at different times. When you, after you post them, it will set the date differently. For example, if the formula of 1M is entered in the posting uh, with a posting date of uh, January 15th, 2020, when the journal posts, the date will be changed to 2-15-2020. So, it's a one month increment from the date that you had on the journal at the time you posted it. So you want to use one of the following methods to post entries on the last day of every month after the current month. So what you can use here is a 1D, one day, plus one month minus one day. With this formula, the program calculates the date correctly, regardless of how many days there are in a month. You can also use one month and plus the current month and posting the first entry on an arbitrary date of the month and then entering this formula. The formula will uh, calculate this based on the remaining days of the month and put in the last day of the month for you. If posting monthly accrual, uh, accruals, 
that must be reversed the following month, reversing fixed, reversing variable, reversing balance method, post them on the last day of each month. The first entry must be posted on the last day of the current month, and the recurring frequency must be either 1D plus 1M minus 1D or 1M plus CM. This makes sure the reversing entry is always posted on the first day of the following month. I like using the 1M plus CM plus the current month. Seems to work very well for these. So you'll see these formulas on the journal that I have up here. And it controls the next date that's going to be put into the system. And it controls making sure that you get the reversal done on the first day of the following month. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the naming variable definition. So in the description, if I put a percent one in that verbiage, what it will do is it will replace it with the current day. For example, Monday if I'm posting it on a Monday. If I put a percent two in, it puts in the current week. For example, week one or week 52. Percent three, the current month number. For example, in January, it would be one. A percent four puts in the actual name of the month. I like this one myself. And a percent five puts in the current accounting period name, for example, January. So it checks your accounting periods and uses whatever name is in those. Um, I like using percent four, and you'll see that on the journals that we have, I'm using that throughout these examples. So I want to go back to the recurring journals, and I have two lines set up. One is fixed, one is variable. I've used this date that we talked about, 1M plus CM. I have a posting date in here of January 31st, 2019. Uh, because I wanted to do numerous transactions out here. So I've just set this as the date on which I want to post this. And I don't have any restrictions um, in the general ledger setup to prevent me from doing that. I've entered a couple of invoices in here, one for postage, one for insurance. Put in a vendor, and the vendors, this vendor doesn't make much sense, but I didn't have good vendors to choose from. So just selected a vendor to do things with. Over here, I've entered in an amount. So I I'm, uh, I'm going to set up a, uh, an item out here basically for kind of like a health insurance for 5000 bucks, and then postage for $200. And the reason I have these examples is that they're quite different. So if I click on this uh, amount allocated here, I can then go in here and I can set up accounts that I want to allocate this $5,000 to. So I'm going to uh, allocate it to the retirement plan, group life insurance, and my 401k contributions. And over on the far side here, I can put in a percentage of that amount that I want to allocate, 25, 25, and 50%. And the system calculates, based on the $5,000, what the posting should be for these. So this is set up, and each month it just stays here. This is a fixed cost that we're, that we're going to have every month. And so it goes out and just lets me do this uh, based upon this percentage of allocation each month. I have another one here set up for the $200. The reason I wanted to set this up is that I have delivery expense retail set up here. And so I have the same account number set up three different times. But what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm distributing this out to different department codes, to administration, to production, to sales. So I could take an amount of money in the same GL account, and I can distribute it out to various department codes as well. So here I'm allocating 20%, 50%, and 30%, and it breaks that down as to $40, $160, because the total is $200. So I'm allocating this based upon a percentage. Here I'm doing it same account, different department codes, or different dimensions, if you will. And every month, this will vary, but when I put it in, it will use those percentages to distribute it. So what I can do now to kind of see what's going to happen here is that I can go to this post and print area and I can preview the posting. So the system goes out, shows me my GL entries, my vendor ledger entries, and so on and so forth. So I can take a look at GL entries here and show the related entries for this. And what I see is that I'm going to be entering in a basically a transaction here to my accounts payable for $7,510 because this is Canadian and uh, we're paying it in US dollars. And then I, I'm seeing the distribution to those, what's being allocated to each of those three accounts that I set up, the retirement plan, life insurance, and 401k contributions. And then I see my next transaction, 
the $200 to the London Postmaster, the allocation out to these uh, this same account using different department codes out here. So I can preview what I'm going to get before I actually go out and, uh, and post this data. So these recurring general journals can be set up for posting uh, allocations that I have, for posting accruals, for posting my payroll to the various accounts that I want to do. So my payroll every week or every month is a certain amount of money, and uh, uh, I'm going to distribute it out to FICA, FUTA, direct labor, all the various accounts it may be. So I can set these up as a variable type and then just plug in my payroll and allocate it out to the correct accounts. So uh, this is uh, something else that can be done within these journals. So since I have these two lines in, we've looked at them. What I can do now is uh, I can go out and simply post these. It says, do you want to post them? I'm going to say yes. It says the journal lines were successfully posted. And if you notice, it's converted my dates over to the next month, the last day of the, of the next month. So it did exactly what it should do based upon these uh, frequency, recurring frequencies that I've entered in here. And if we slide across to the right and take a look at this, you'll notice that on my variable line, it has wiped out the expense. It no longer is $200, but it left my fixed expense up here. So this is basically the way that these work. My allocations are still here. Over here, my allocations are still here based on a percentage, but when I put in my new amount, it will recalc what these are based upon the new uh, amount of the entry that I make for the next month out here. So this is basically how the recurring journals entr entries function within Business Central. If I navigate to the vendor or one of these vendors, I'm going to... Uh, the vendor list here. I'm going to navigate to this vendor 1000, my Postmaster transaction. And uh, when I do this, I can uh, navigate to the ledger entries. And I can see here that now at the top of this list is my January 31st transaction to this vendor out here. And I can go to uh, navigate. I can look at my GL entries here, show related entries. And I can see that I have uh, an entry for, I have an entry for uh, $200 to accounts payable. I have the same entry to each account that we have out here, except that uh, now I have department codes that I'm distributing as sales, production, administration. So I've split this out to these various department codes, all using a single account number. So you can see how this distribution works for you.